it's a competition clinching shot. Whoa! How about that? The LET Golf Podcast, the official podcast of the Ladies European Tour. Hello and welcome to another episode of the LET Golf Podcast. I'm George Cooper and finally we are back after a seven week break in the LET schedule. The tour resumed last week with the Jabra Ladies Open at Evian Resort Golf Club and it was business as usual for Lynn Grant. After a thrilling three days, the Swede battled past Anne Van Dam to win by two shots in France and claim her fifth title on the Ladies European Tour. What a player and what a 14 months it's been for Lynn. Next up on the schedule, it's a trip across the pond as our stars tee up for the second Aramco Team Series event of the season in Florida. Lynn will be there, as will several juggernauts from the world of women's golf, including Lexi Thompson, Jessica Corder, and world number two, Lydia Ko. You can follow all the action this week live on our YouTube channel, and the best part is it's totally free. Another player who will be there will also be this week's guest on the podcast. Johanna Gustafsson arrives at West Palm Beach as the defending team captain after she guided our team to victory in New York last year. After also finishing third in the race to Costa del Sol in 2022, Nicola Kenton sat down with the highly consistent Swede to talk about that week, her golfing journey and her goals for the season. So without further ado, this is Johanna Gustafsson on the LET Golf Podcast. Johanna, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Uh, it's been a good day with sunny day here in Sweden. So I've been out playing a bit this morning. Yeah, Very nice. And how have you been doing over the break that we've had in, in the season? Uh, it's been good. Good to be home for a bit, doing some practice, being at the gym a lot and hang out with friends and family. It's been good. Yeah. I was going to say, compared to last year where we had a lot of, lot of weeks on the road where you didn't get to spend as much time at home, was it, has it kind of been nice to have this little break now? Yeah, it has. It has. It's been it's been good and I think it's, it's going to help uh, this summer that I got this time off. Uh, obviously, last year it was just full on the whole time pretty much and... Uh, yeah, I think it, this extra little uh, off season uh, has been has been doing good for me. Yeah, and so on, obviously on every podcast we put, speak to how people got into the game, and I know you got into it kind of age eleven. So talk talk me through that, and how how did you first pick up a golf club? Uh, well, I'll I'll tell you the bits I remember. <laughs> uh, my brother and I we started at the same time. He didn't continue, but I did. Uh, my dad played so and my cousins played a bit at the time as well so I, I wanted to try it I tried lots of different sports and um, kind of hadn't found my thing yet um, so I tried golf and I mean golf is tough isn't it especially as you start up but I remember like walking on the like practice course with my dad and I was just so frustrated because it's tough and I'm I was crying <laughs> but I'm also very stubborn and dad was like we should go home this is not fun let's just go home and I said no I'll keep going and it's such a challenging game but it's it's fun isn't it as well when you hit that good shot <laughs> even if it's just a one on the whole day but yeah um, and then the fact that you just practiced alone and you could do your own thing I think that really suited me I was gonna say you mentioned hitting one good shot and that that can carry you through yeah. to, the, to the next day's practice was that what you liked about it did you like hitting the ball and kind of seeing how far you can hit it and where it could go I do think I enjoyed all the different parts of the game and obviously there was other juniors that you could practice with and have the the seriousness of the practice but then also the social bit with the other guys there and it's a very different sport in a lot of ways but so fun (laughs) and you mentioned you tried other sports beforehand what what ones did you try out and have a go at I played a lot of team sports, um, tried basketball for a while, floorball, which is, I don't know if a lot of people know about that, but it's big in Scandinavia. Then I uh, tried football, but briefly. Dad like, like dad was all for me playing football, but <laughs> <laughs> couldn't do that, no. was not my thing. Yeah, so a lot of team sports, but I do think the individual bit suit me. You're not the first Swede to have mentioned floorball. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> But as you say, it's kind of a very regional thing that 
not not necessarily everybody knows about <laughs> and what are some of your kind of early memories of playing golf that you can remember <laughs> do you remember yeah, like your first competition I don't know if it was my first competition but I remember a few bits from different tournaments I guess growing up but I think what you remember the most is just being at the club and those late summer nights at the driving range with the other friends that and being at the club a lot yeah and other people have mentioned obviously the social aspects of golf and I know in Sweden like Lynn and Maya mentioned that you they'd see friends at the golf club kind of every week was that the same for you where you made a circle of friends at that golf club yes for sure uh, we would spend the whole summers out there and even the winters we have this indoor uh, place uh, at my old club and um, yeah we could be there play they had a pool table so we play it's some golf shots play some pool and uh, we could stay over uh, yeah it was great and how did you kind of see your progression as a golfer when you were younger kind of how much did your handicap come down and how much more were you enjoying it obviously as you got better everyone <laughs> loves the sport as you improve yeah I think when you're when you're starting out as a kid it's it's so easy to you'll have that progress naturally just getting older and getting more mature as well in your body and yeah it's always you yeah the progress was slow but steady I'd say because uh, I was never obviously starting out quite late I guess compared to a lot of other girls I didn't really play in any big junior competitions or I was never in the national team uh, or anything so I just did my own thing and uh, slowly got better yeah that's obviously fun to to have that progress yeah and you did get a few amateur wins whilst you were kind of at home playing in tournaments in the Scandinavia. What was that like to play in those to start off with and then, you know, get over the line? Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's obviously fun to win. <laughs> that's what I guess you go into a tournament, not maybe always thinking you're going to win, but uh, that's the best outcome, isn't it? It's good fun. I don't, I don't have like big memories from winning. Other than picking like the prices yourself, uh, which was always good. It's also a bit confusing when you're young and you're picking stuff from a table because there's obviously meant to be a price that's worth more than something else. I went up to the table after winning and I seen these pair of uh, gloves, like these warm mitts. And I was like, oh, that's great. I need one of a couple of those. And then next to it was a brand new putter. And I was like, yeah, no, I'll take the gloves. <laughs> And the next person just ran up and took the putter. So, yeah. Gloves over putter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is cold at home, I'm sure. Yeah, it's where it's Sweden after. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm sure you do need warm mittens on your hands. Yeah. Um, was that the best prize that you ever got, the mittens? Was there another one? It's the one I remember anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then as you, as you say, uh, steady progress, as you got older, when was the point where you kind of thought, oh, I could do golf as a career? Was there a point where something switched in your brain or, you know, you suddenly realised, do I want to do this? Yeah, not being in the national team. And then and then there was other girls in my club that were better as juniors. So I didn't really think I was good enough for a long time because that's kind of what I saw. And I didn't play on the, like, best tour, on the best junior tour. I mean, I always worked hard and tried to get better, but I didn't really know because I enjoyed it not because I wanted to maybe make a living out of it but then and I finished school and I was 18 and I got a new coach and I actually then started thinking maybe I can win on the Swedish tour and maybe yeah if I just work hard and we'll just see what happens and uh, so I practiced very hard those years and I yeah I did everything I could to get as good as I could and I played on the Swedish tour but I also worked in the winter's nursery for a lot of years just trying to finance the playing in the summers so <laughs> I think that was about that time then when I met Alex mm -hmm. uh, after a few years and um, played my first year on the Axis and yeah. that's when I kind of thought okay I'll, I'll really give it a go. And you mentioned there about obviously being a nursery teacher in the winters as you say you can't play a lot of golf no. necessarily in Sweden in the winters anyway <laughs> due no. to the weather obviously you do a lot of indoor stuff rather than outdoor um what was that like kind of as you say you used it to finance you but was it also a thing obviously you are 
kind of progressing your own skills and your own personal development at the same time by having such a social role as being in a nursery? Uh, yeah, uh, I really enjoyed those years, even though it's a lot of hard work. I admire uh, mostly women working <laughs> in that field and uh, I had a great time and I stayed at the same place for because I, I jumped around a bit to different uh, nurseries, but I stayed at one for a lot of years and yeah, I, I had a really good time there and obviously you feel a lot, you get closer to the kids and it's it's good. Um, they're always happy to see your face in the morning. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it's it was hard because I tried to practice at the same time working a full-time job and then going to the gym in the evenings and trying to get some practicing whenever I could. But I think that's it's been good as well because I've really like felt how it is to work really hard and still going to practice golf even when you're really tired and I think it's good for the morale <laughs> yeah I was gonna say did it give you like a sense of discipline because obviously you knew that you had to work between these hours and so therefore you only had this much time to practice did that really help kind of with now as well knowing that if you're tired after a tournament for example you're like well I know I can do this much practice in this much time <laughs> yes it did and I definitely a lot of discipline I learned a lot of discipline that, during those years I don't know if it has that big of I mean I'm very disciplined still with the work that I do and the practice but it's it's different now I'm I'm over 30 <laughs> and my body is uh, oh, getting tired <laughs> a lot easier as well so I, I can't do as much practice as I did then but instead now I'm very disciplined in when I actually do my practice that it's good quality practice. And you mentioned playing on the access series so I know you went to LETQ school beforehand. First of all what was the decision in turning pro because obviously so many people do it in so many different ways. Some people do it at 18, some people do it after college, some people do it when the time is right. Um, yeah what was the point where obviously you'd got your new coach and you thought oh maybe I can give this a go. When, when did you decide that you were turning pro? Kind of after school because once again, it was this whole thing that I didn't think I was good enough to even go to college. It wasn't even in my mind, really. And, and I didn't really want to study anymore anyway. So after school, I just turned professional because then when I travel around in Sweden, I was like, I might as well make a little bit of money instead of because I'm not going to college, basically. Mm -hmm. Me and Alexandra and our dads, we went to Morocco to play Q school because she had gone to college and she wanted to give it a go. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to go because I, I do want to play on the Access Tour and get because the uh, Nordic Golf Tour, the Swedish Pro Tour was good, but not there wasn't that many tournaments really. Mm -hmm. So I decided to go and I didn't really go to get the card. Like I said, I was... I didn't think I really had a chance to be honest I just went to to get an access category which which I did and then that first year on access what was that like learning to travel um, kind of all over Europe obviously instead of just in Scandinavia and going to different tournaments and that kind of thing it was good fun I had a lot of friends that went as well from the Swedish tours that I traveled with in Sweden and they went to the access as well so we had each other and it was it was really fun to do that and I obviously did a lot better than I thought as well and yeah it was a big learning curve it was good to I mean just starting like talking English on a regular basis really and then meeting all the other girls and obviously a lot of the girls that played the access then are now on the main tour and and as you said you did slightly better than you thought you got a victory in 2015 in quite dramatic circumstances <laughs> to be honest uh, talk us through that week that was a crazy week really it was in Norway I played really good that week and I had a friend come over for the last round to caddy for me it was obviously a playoff that's the big thing about this story the playoff uh, we have I think it's a world record I'm gonna I'm just gonna say it it was a world record <laughs> on the amount of playoff holes we played 14 extra holes after the round was finished and uh, eventually I I won 14th hole but it I had to dig deep for that one. I was going to say, what was that like? Because you essentially nearly played a whole nother round of golf yeah. again. But what, how much like mental resilience does that take to, number one, know that you're in a playoff, and know obviously what's at stake, but then to do it again and again and again? What was that like? 
oh, it's tough, obviously, but at the same time, it's fun because you know, in that situation, the worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to finish second. Mm-hmm. Do you have everything to win? Uh, but they put us on this hole. It was the last hole, and it wasn't. It was quite a tough hole, and just kept making pars over and over and over. I think we bogeyed the first hole, though, but then we just made pars, and then they swap, swapped holes for a bit. But then, oh, back to the the 18th, and yeah, eventually I held the putt for a birdie. And what was that feeling like? Number one, when when that birdie went in. Um, what was the first feeling that you got? Was it relief? It was kind of over that you'd done it? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're just happy, aren't you? And uh, when my friend was there, Jukke, he he was so happy as well. And he said to me after he had, like, after the 18 holes, he already had blisters on his feet. And he was like, oh, finally, I can take my shoes off. But then, like, okay, no, you have to walk, actually, 14 extra holes. So, <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it just... It feels like a proper win that because even if you want the amateur stuff when you're younger, this is uh, bigger for sure. Yeah, I was going to say, how much more confidence did that give you to kind of spur you on and get your LET card, which obviously you ended up doing at the end of that season? Yeah, it was a big boost, obviously, to to be able to do that. And then, then you were in a good position as well. So you just kept going and... The last event of that year in England at Stoke by Nayland, that's when Alex um, came and cadred for me as well. And we kind of started our relationship. So we had been in contact over that year, a bit over texts and, and calls, but we hadn't met. We met obviously earlier, but not just as friends. And uh, so that's memor- memorable as well for me, because that's when we kind of started our relationship. Yeah. I got my card. <laughs> um and then yeah so going to the let how much more of an adjustment was that as you say you had this thing where you always thought you potentially weren't good enough but then you've won on letters you've gained more confidence with obviously all the top tens that you got as well and now you're on the let what was that kind of adjustment like it was tough because it went very quickly for me as i only had one year on the access and then i was thrown into the let it wasn't that many events when I started, so I still kept playing on the Axis. I started working with Alex then, after we got together for real, and I kind of took him on as my coach. And we just realized, like, there's a lot of work to do in this wing, which I knew as well. And there was a lot of tough tournaments for me where I just, I was not even close to making the cut. But then I've managed to keep my card anyway. But it was a lot of pressure those first years because I didn't feel like I was playing good enough really and but at that time you just you needed like a couple of good finishes really because there were so few events Mm -hmm. so I managed to hang on to the card but we've been through the years obviously working very hard on the swing to get it more where I wanted because I didn't really know that much about my swing or when when we first met so I've learned a lot it was tough early on I would say you got your second win on the access in Spain but what was it like to kind of balance playing on access on an let was it really important to you that you did the boat both of them so that you had the playing opportunities still and you were still obviously doing really well on access getting a win a few years later we did uh, a lot of us played both tours just because we didn't really know what was going on with the let and the schedule very weak back then so just to get the playing opportunities we a lot of the girls felt like it was important to keep their access card and keep their LUT card and that was a bit stressful and I, it was hard for me the first year when I decided not to go and play on the access as well because that's what you have to fall back on but uh, it worked out all right because in the end it's just traveling in Europe the most stressful part was probably playing on the LUT I'd say <laughs> <laughs> and then skip forward a couple of years to kind of Covid times which obviously was strange because then the LET was going to have a big full schedule in 2020 and then obviously that got kind of cut in half uh, due to not being able to play but you still were able to play at tournaments once you came back and you made your appearance at AIG Women's Open. Um, what was it like playing in a major despite the fact that obviously it was slightly different to normal with the fact we were still in COVID times and obviously there were restrictions? It was good fun to play at Troon and um, my dad was with me to the Scottish and then to I think I qualified through the Scottish that year because they didn't have a qualifier because of COVID and that was 
really fun that wanted to definitely go to Troon. Um, he had watched a lot of uh, footages, footage of uh, Stenson winning there a few <laughs> years earlier. And uh, yeah, we had a great time. Obviously in COVID, it's not like super fun because there's no no one watching really. And uh, it was good. I, I really enjoyed that. And I had obviously played a major before at the Avian. Uh, didn't very go very well uh, that time. I was very nervous and felt a lot of pressure then. And this time I didn't really. I, I felt like I learned a lot from that first experience. So I, I just enjoyed it and didn't play as good as I maybe would have wanted, especially the third round. But you learn and uh, I definitely learned a lot. I was going to say, the fact that you played then in both European majors at one point, obviously Evian and then AIG is usually quite a different course to, to what you play at Evian. Um, yeah, how great was it to have that experience under your belt at both of them? Um, as I say, in two very different normally conditions. <laughs> uh, no, that's it's good, and I I I think at that point I did feel like I was a player that could deserve to be playing majors and could do well as well. So all the experience you can get in those type of tournaments are are great. Still haven't had like the finish there I want, but I'll, I'll try again this year. Yeah, <laughs> keep trying. And then yeah, so the past two seasons so 2021 you had another consistent season uh finishing 22nd in the race to Costa so as you say every season on the LET you've kind of improved your best finishes have got higher <laughs> you're having more top 10s etc and then we come to last season 2022 um where you had your best season to date talk me through how you were feeling at the start of last year did did you have any inkling of what was to come I have felt that I played better in the last few years for sure and the uh, swing and the stuff that Alex and I've been working on with the swing had definitely settled in so I have always felt like I hit good shots or like the last few years anyway uh, where I should be doing better than I do um, and then it kind of fell together quite nicely like like you said before like I hadn't had top 10 finish in the early years I didn't it took me a long time to get a top 10 finish um, and once I did it kind of I still feel that way though like I I just yearn for those uh, top 10 finishes because it took me so long to get one so it's always nice to do uh started out very well obviously last year a few top 10 finishes and that kind of I think it made me relax because then I already had kind of beaten any record I'd ever done before so yeah and I was playing good I was playing solid and enjoyed it obviously just kept playing because at that point I could get into the British and Nevian and so I kept playing and it's hard as well when you play good to just take a break as well because you feel like you're doing good and why not but it did get tired in the end of the year I got to that point where at the British I was not really feeling it to be honest I was just longing for a break so I did play play my cards a bit wrong there I'd say but again you live and you learn (laughs) <laughs> yeah for sure and we'll talk through some of the specific tournaments from last year because you had some runner-up finishes earlier in the year so obviously at the uh Ramco Saudi Ladies International that was your first runner-up finish where you came through on the final day what was that like as you say kind of you'd had a top 10 in Kenya and then that was the next tournament for you and you'd ended up as as runner-up um how much confidence did you get from just those first two events, despite being obviously a month apart? No, that was big uh, in Saudi. Kenya was, it's good to do well in Kenya, but the course is very tricky and you, you have to have a bit of luck as well, I feel there, because it's quite dry, bumpy, but I did play well. And then in Saudi, that was big for me because I had obviously never finished that high before. And also in knowing what's at stake, like money-wise as well, it's a big event and uh, playing with Georgia before, but playing with Georgia now after she's an open winner and playing with Anna, two open championship winners, that's big as well to be able to do well playing with that type of players and also feeling that you're like, yeah, I'm doing all right here and I'm I'm not, I'm hitting good, like just as good shots as, as anyone else really. So it's good to see that sometimes. I was very proud of, proud of that weekend. And then you had another runner-up finish in Australia at the Women's NSW Open, where obviously it was a Swedish (laughs) one-two at the top of the leaderboard. Um, What was that like again, putting yourself in contention? Maya had 
obviously given herself a lead going into the final two days but on that final day you put her under pressure <laughs> you, you were making the birdies where she wasn't and she said she felt the pressure from you um so what was it like playing in that final group on that final day I didn't really think I had a chance to be honest <laughs> <laughs> I went out and said to Alex that morning uh, well Maya's gonna win so I'll just have to try and keep <laughs> stay behind her really but I played very good I did feel like she she felt the pressure. Then in the end, I kind of made a bogey and made a couple of bogeys, I think. So the last few holes, I think she was kind of quite relaxed. But uh, I was obviously still trying to get that second and a birdie on the last help me get it. And I was very happy with that, to be honest. Like there was the last event in a very long stretch for me as well. And I was going to get a few days off, which I was pretty much happy with just the days off than the actual second <laughs> to be honest yeah. I was gonna say that week between um women's NSW and Bangkok where obviously the tour went to Madrid but um I know you stayed in Australia as did a few others um to take that time off having done kind of six weeks in a six seven weeks in a row of tournaments um how important is it to try and take those breaks kind of throughout the season when you can it's very important and I think a lot of us have learned a lot last year and heading into this year because we haven't had this type of schedule before knowing now that it's very important to just have those days off and even if if you have a tournament the next week maybe you don't have to touch the club for a week because you're you'll be fine <laughs> yeah yeah for sure and then I mentioned Bangkok so you went there and you finished as a runner again you'd you'd had three kind of within a, a two-month period that was slightly different because obviously Manon was out front and you were chasing a few groups back on that final day but what was that one like for you? That was great fun I always in like enjoy playing in Asia and I really like the courses there I think it suits me. It was a fun last round when I got to play with another top player Arya Tangan. She obviously hits the ball great, so that was good to see. Yeah, and I just kept doing my thing, trying to make birdies. I didn't actually see in the leaderboard, but yeah, I didn't maybe thought about winning, just trying to finish as high as possible. And yeah, at that point, you'd kind of cemented yourself very much so in the top five of the race to Costa del Sol because of those three runner-up finishes. How much did that really help you then, obviously heading back to Europe, knowing how many points you had, the fact that your card was pretty much done. (laughs) You didn't have to worry for the rest of the season. And as you said, you kind of knew at that point you weren't too far away from securing qualification for Evian, AIG. Obviously, the co-sanctioned tournaments in the summer you were playing anyway. So, yeah, what was that like, knowing the security of having that? It's obviously very nice. I've never been in that position before where I felt that early in the season that, my card is actually taken care of Um, but at the same time I I didn't really change much in the schedule like I said because I wanted to really make sure I got into the Evian and British and once I've decided to do something and once I've booked the flights and stuff I I really tend to change those plans. It's obviously nice to be able to play relaxed and that but at the same time you do have high expectations when you finish top 10 the last four events or whatever so it's definitely fun and it makes you relaxed but do think a lot about keep doing good as well and one other thing that you had last year which you you did miss the tournament to, to get married uh you mentioned Alex obviously but you did get married in May of last year and then came back and played kind of <laughs> the week after um what was it like to have a wedding at home see your family and friends um get to celebrate a little bit um were you planning whilst on tour was everything already sorted I had I I was lucky because I had uh, good friends that helped me out a lot with the planning and that so we had taken care of most of that stuff in the winter and uh, no that was obviously a great day a great week to get all the English come over to Sweden and everyone to meet and you get to see friends that you haven't seen in a long time too so it's just good isn't it to throw a big party for your friends and get married at the same time. <laughs> oh, I did go back to play maybe a bit too early, but uh, at the same time, I think that was good because it set me up. I didn't do that well 
in Italy the week after, but I did do better at Scandinavian mix after that. So uh, yeah, no regrets. I... <laughs> and have you had a honeymoon yet? Uh, we did actually. We we decided to go to Italy uh, in January this year, which we would have done anyway. But we said let's make it our honeymoon so that we at least have can say that we we have. Yeah, done. <laughs> and you managed to do it within a year of getting married, which is, yeah. you know, pretty good considering your schedule. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, talking of Alex, obviously something happened a few weeks, a few weeks later where Alex is obviously a golf coach, but also does play and qualified for the Open Championship last summer. So I know that obviously he did one of the qualifiers and we were going to interview you, obviously, with your great season. Then you went... I'm not sure if I'm playing that week anymore. <laughs> what was that like with him qualifying style? Last year was just the year that kept on giving, it felt like for us. Um, it's a hard one to beat last year. But the Open was just the cherry on top, wasn't it? <laughs> Obviously, Alex has played good in that, but it's it's a big thing getting into the Open from not played. He's played like pro arms and stuff last year and not really on a tour. And then qualified and really, it was a playoff and he got in and it was uh, unreal. <laughs> <laughs> and then when, when did he say, oh, um, can you take that week off and come come with me and carry my bag for me? <laughs> How did that come about? I was obviously always going to be there. I didn't ask him until a few days after, I think, or maybe it was the next day perhaps I just wanted him to really get a, some time to think about it and he obviously got a lot of I can carry for you I'll do it. <laughs> a lot of job applications but uh, he kind of already had in his mind decided that he wanted me to do it because I had some experience playing in majors part of that and then also he obviously wanted us to have this experience together uh, which is lovely and it was great he had his family family and friends came up and it was obviously a big big week for him uh but awesome really to be there among all the legends and be able to I think he was very happy to be able to give that back to his family and to his mm-hmm. mom and dad who's always supported him and then just having them there and in the players lounge and you know it's it's just the dream come true for him I think it shows what we can do together and uh, how hard work can pay off and uh, just to share it. It's great. Yeah. And then the final thing from last year that we'll talk about is uh, the reason we have you on this week. So obviously you were winning team captain at the Aramco team series, New York, and we're heading into Florida this week. So talk me through uh, those couple of days last year with Jess Carlson as as one of your teammates and Carolyn Lampert. What was that like to kind of get that victory? I remember being on the range with you when we weren't sure if a playoff or another playoff was going to happen or not. Um, talk me through what you remember. The year that kept on giving, as we say. Oh, unreal again to win one of the team events. Uh, obviously, good fun to win as a team. I haven't won on the tour on my own but uh, I imagine it feels something like this because it was great. I didn't play my best golf that week but we all kind of I mean Jessica played great um, she finished high and we had a great amateur Jenny uh, who played great as well and Cara and I we we made a few birdies too <laughs> so we all contributed but uh, yeah it was it, it it's it's good fun to do it with friends and uh, Jessica is obviously a good friend and Caro, I, she's a great girl and obviously known her for a lot of years as well. Oh, it's special. And um, what is it like, because obviously, as I've alluded to, you were one of the first teams to come in that day. <laughs> kept having to keep tabs on, on way, where you were. Um, so obviously you, you went for food and then were watching what was happening afterwards. And then, as I say, you kind of headed to the range because you never know what's going to happen in this situation. We'd seen many playoffs before in in these events. So, what were you thinking when you did head to, head to the range? All three of you headed over there. Um, I think we were quite nervous, or I was, because I had also had a lot of pain in my back that week. So I had Jessica rub me up with some tiger balm, 
in the back and I was like okay I'll just have to go need some shots uh, obviously hope not to get in the playoff because it's uh, even though I had a good record it's uh, I prefer not to <laughs> uh, especially when it's a team I, I I can't imagine how they feel the girls who go out because uh, it's obviously you you want to do well for your whole team that situation so I'm, I'm happy we didn't have to in the end and then yeah finally just kind of summing up summing up last year as a whole apart from the year that kept on giving (laughs) um what lessons did you learn and are you taking forward from 2022 i'm saying that i'm gonna play less and but it's it's different this year because the schedule looks different i am going to try to maybe skip a few tournaments but i think it's hard because i do enjoy it um and uh, i think i really learned a lot at the end of last year because I obviously lost the joy a bit uh, after playing so good and and then I was uh, in third position for Red Cross and Assault and I did feel a lot of pressure at the end to, to hang on to that uh, uh, third place. So that's why I've changed a lot of my goals uh, this year, uh, not being so result orientated and just trying to have a good good mental game plan. <laughs> <laughs> this year uh, with good routine and just trying to stay focused throughout the year and not lose focus and focus on stuff that I can't really do anything about which is what the other girls are doing um, and then for the early bit of this year how did you find uh, the start of 2023 not necessarily the start you would have wanted in Kenya however as you said you're working on those different goals and changing things and then obviously ended up with a top 10 in South Africa and you've got two top 20s just outside in Saudi as well. So you have had continue to show your consistency coming into this season. Um, yeah. What was the start of the year like? I think it's been good. I've, the things that we've been working on this winter has has kind of worked so far. Uh, I've kept working on them now and I I don't really expect to do as well as last year. Uh, I think it's it's uh, hard to be, like we said before, I've kept doing better and better on the order of merit and, and that, um, which is going to be tough, uh, obviously, uh, but it's doable, of course, but I just want to keep becoming a better golfer and keep being consistent because that's one of my biggest strengths but also getting better. And I do feel like the shots that I'm hitting this year is, yeah, they're, they're better actually. And I, I just, I do feel like I keep, I, I keep improving and that's, that's all I can do. Absolutely. And just a couple of questions about what you do outside of golf. Cause you, you always said you enjoy, enjoy your time at home with family and friends, whether that's watching movies or doing other bits, for example, in this break, what have you been up to? With in terms of seeing family and friends and things outside of golf course? I've um, gone to a lot of sports. I've seen a lot of hockey, ice hockey, because the local team has done good. Uh, I've watched volleyball because the local girls have done good. <laughs> so I try and go and see sports and watch some sports on TV. We enjoy that. And seeing friends, uh, having them over for dinner and uh, going to have a barbecue on Friday. <laughs> going to see my family and play games. Uh, we like a good quiz. And uh, we've been to London, Alex and I, to see his mom and dad and go to some musicals. And his cousin was here last weekend from England with his girlfriend. So it's uh, we're just trying to do stuff that we don't have time to do otherwise. And uh, we like being home. We do. What musicals did you come and see over here? Dove Sole Miserable. Really good. One of my top ones, actually. And then we saw uh, Moulin Rouge. So we kept it French. <laughs> Sticking with the theme. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a mini honeymoon. All yeah. Over again. yeah, exactly. It was good. And you mentioned a quiz there, that you like like a quiz. So to finish this off, I do have a little quiz for you about, well, your time on the LET and LET Access series so far. So the first two questions is the same question, but one is LET and one is for access. So we'll we'll see how you do. So what is your lowest round on the LET? Eight under. Where did you do that? Do you know where you did it? I think last year at the Scottish. Yes, exactly. The 64 (laughs) at the Trust Golf Women's Scottish Open in 2022, where you 
hadn't had the best first day and then um we're trying to make the cut and you made it yeah you did it with, with this round of eight yeah. under uh, but the same question for let us so what is your lowest round on the access series that's harder because that was i want to say seven it could be six but when i won i think it was six i just shot 600 but i think i've shot yes so it was a 63 and at that tournament that is seven under par so you were correct in saying potentially <laughs> seven you are correct and yeah that was ribera in 2019 okay so you've made two eagles in a round three times can you tell me the three times that you've done that that's a hard no <laughs> i mean i can give you a clue by saying they're all within the last calendar year well that doesn't help at all does it <laughs> i'm really bad at remembering stuff like this and like holes overall but maybe czech republic evian no nope. well no i won't figure this out this is the thing where i'm frantically checking your scorecard just <laughs> just to double check so the one that you've done this year you've done it this season oh, really? uh the first round of the joburg ladies open where you did an eagle on the first and an eagle on the eighth yes okay your... So I kind of forgot about that because I didn't do it. Very well. It was an it, it was, was a colourful <laughs> scorecard. We'll, we'll, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll go with that. <laughs> yeah. And then last year you did it in your 64 at the Scottish, two eagles. And then the final one was a month later, KPMG Women's Irish Open. That yeah, the first round you eagled six and you eagled eighty. Then yeah, so we've already mentioned your win in Spain. Um, so at the Ribera Ladies Open in 2018. But how many shots did you win by? I know that I played bogey free for three rounds. That uh, maybe five, six. So you weren't that far out. <laughs> right? No. I didn't. I was. Uh, I didn't want to say too much because I was going to say <laughs> overestimate yourself. No. <laughs> but you should have. Uh, and then the final one, as we mentioned, you got that bronze medal for Sweden at the European Golf Team Championships in the mixed event. But which countries got gold and silver? Iceland and then Scotland. GB. Yeah. GB. It was maybe a Scottish player was in that team. Yes. <laughs> Michelle might have been. In yeah. That team. You might have been that. Uh, but yes, Iceland won gold and then Great Britain got the silver with Sweden getting the bronze, as you say, after an exciting playoff. Um, but yeah, that's all today. So you didn't do too badly. Well, not too bad. We'll work on the Eagles. On your... Yeah, exactly. I need to remember. That. But yeah, thank you very much for joining me today on the LET Golf Podcast. Uh, if you want to follow the LET Golf Podcast, follow us on Spotify, Apple and Google or wherever you get your podcasts. Follow LET Golf on all our social channels and we'll see you for another episode next week. It's a competition clinching shot. The LET Golf Podcast, the official podcast of the Ladies European Tour.